ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله brothers and sisters in islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome again to righteous companions brothers and sisters in islam this is the fifth episode of the series righteous companions and this episode is so important because it will talk about the creed of a muslim once it comes to the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brothers and sisters in islam i want your heart today i want you to listen carefully to what i'm going to say because this is how should you relay to the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a muslim belonging to the victorious group of the muslims الطائفة المنصورة أهل السنة والجماعة You must have a precise creed once it comes to the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم The first question that we will answer today Who is considered to be a companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم The consensus Everyone who saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even if it is a short while a short duration of time while this person is able to recognize that this is the messenger of Allah and he became a Muslim during the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he died as a Muslim so again Anyone who met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if it is for a short time, with one condition, that this person is able to recognize that this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's a little bit older to be able to recognize that this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he became a Muslim during the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this person died as a Muslim. Even if he may have went back to disbelief and returned to Islam again, but he must have died as a Muslim. Anyone who meet these prerequisites would then be considered a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a debate amongst the companions, amongst the uh, scholars of the Ummah, regarding people who saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were Muslims but before the prophethood of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm talking about Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl, the father of Sa'id ibn Zayd, the man who will be resurrected in the day of resurrection as an ummah by himself. He was a Muslim. He was like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, never prayed to an idol. He never committed shirk. He worshipped Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala according to the millah the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did before he became a prophet but now the question even so Zayd met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be he considered a companion or not there is a debate amongst the companion amongst the scholars of the ummah regarding this issue some debate took place regarding individuals who saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but after he died and before his burial that duration of time actually there is uh, Abu Du'ayb his name is Khuwailid ibn Khalid al-Hudali someone subhanallah who did see the body of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after his death but uh, before his burial of course but he did not see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alive there is a consensus that this person is not to be considered a sahabi a companion so this is the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anyone who basically fulfill these requirements or these uh, prerequisites then he become a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is important to know 
This is important to know who is the companion and who is not the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember the first four episodes, we said that these companions, they have rights upon us. So if the name of this individual is mentioned, you need to say, Radiyallahu An. So you need to know if he is a companion or not. Also, you need to know if he's a companion or not, because all the companions are just our udul. If they deliver an account, a hadith, or a statement that was said by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it must be accepted. A companion cannot be accused of lying. All of them, the scholars of hadith, the people who are experts in authenticating the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they consider all the companions to be udul. So I need to know this companion is a companion or not because if he's a companion and if he tells me the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said i will believe him without any restrictions without any reservations i mean brothers and sisters in islam what is the creed of a muslim a muslim someone who holds the proper creed regarding the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam i will cite to you what al imam Abu al-Izz al-Tahawi, rahimahullah, the author of the Al-Aqeedah al-Tahawiyya said. He said, وَنُحِبُّ أَصْحَابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ And we love all the companions of the Messenger of Allah. وَلَا نُفْرِطُ فِي حُبِّ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ But we do not overdo it. We do not place them. We do not make them gods. We do not make them icons that we worship and we call upon. No. We do not elevate them. We believe that they are human beings. And we do not disclaim any of them. Not because I love Ali, then I disclaim Abu Bakr, and then I curse Abu Bakr. La! Not because I love Abu Bakr, then I, I'm going to curse Ali. No! Not because I love Uthman, I'm going to curse Ali. No! We do not disclaim any of them. We love all of them. This is the creed of a Muslim regarding the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And dare you curse any of them. And we hate those who hate the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not because of them, no. Because they hate the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We also dislike and hate those who do not speak good about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We dislike those who do not speak good about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَلَا نَذْكُرُهُمْ إِلَّا بِخَيْرٍ And we do not mention any of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but with all goodness. I say Abu Bakr al-Siddiq رضي الله عنه Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه Uthman ibn Affan رضي الله عنه Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan رضي الله عنه We love all of them within, without any exception. Pay attention my brothers and sisters in Islam. These companions they already made it to Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Umar fil Jannah, Uthman fil Jannah, Ali fil Jannah, Abdul Rahman ibn Aw fil Jannah, Talha fil Jannah, Az Zubayr fil Jannah, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas fil Jannah, Sa'id ibn Zayd fil Jannah, Abu Ubaidah ibn al Jarrah fil Jannah, the hadith fi sunan al Tirmidhi. Bisanadun Sahih, authentic chain of narration, narrated by Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. You have no right to call them anything bad because they made it to Jannah. Who are you? I'm not even certain about my faith. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Al Imam Abu al Izz al Tahawi also said, Wahubbuhum, their love, their love is deen, meaning Islam, Iman, the second level, faith. وإحسان, and the third level, which is excellence. He also said, and their hate and dislike is disbelief. كفر ونفاق, hypocrisy, ونفاق وطغيان, and transgression. في معجم الطبراني, المعجم الأوسط, authentic chain of narration, علي بن أبي طالب, Ali ibn Abi Talib himself, رضي الله عنه, he said this, خير هذه الأمة بعد رسول الله أبو بكر وعمر بن الخطاب. 
the best of this ummah after the messenger of Allah after the messenger of Allah Ali is speaking Ali ibn Abi Talib is speaking and I'm saying this intentionally and I know I know you know what I'm talking about he said that they are the best of the ummah after the prophet Abu Bakr and Umar listen to this carefully وَمَنْ أَحَبَّهُمْ وَمَنْ أَحَبَّهُمْ وَأَحَبَّنِي فَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ If you love them and love me, you are a believer. Here is the statement that I'm looking for. وَلَا يَجْتَمِعُوا بُغْضُهُمْ وَحُبِّي فِي قَلْبِ مُؤْمِنٌ And their hate and my love will not be together in a heart of a believer. If you love Ali and hate Abu Bakr and Umar, check your heart out. It's not pure. Is not clean. Check it out. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the creed of a Muslim who follows the Quran and the Sunnah from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah once it comes to the companions of the Prophet. Ibn Taymiyyah also mentioned that Wamin Usul Atiqad Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, one of the fundamentals of the belief of the people of the Sunnah and the Jama'ah. Salamatu sadr that our hearts are pure and clean. Wa salamatu lisan and our tongue are clean once we talk about the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam acting upon the command from Allah. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم. That's a command from Allah that you ask Allah to forgive them and acting upon the command of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Hadith في صحيح البخاري ومسلم من حديث أبي سع من حديث أبي سعيد الخضري عن أبي هريرة لا تسبوا أصحابي. Don't curse my companions of any of you would spend. The mountain of Uhud in gold would not equal a handful of one of them, not even half. Pay attention to your creed once it comes to the companions of the Prophet. Let's take a short break and come back and finish this up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy, for his messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. If a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, truthfully, asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. We have as Muslims a duty and that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was sent to all mankind. So the ummah or the people of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi are all mankind since the time of the Prophet sallallahu till the day of judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Qur'an, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Righteous Companions. A very important episode today. We are still talking about the creed of a Muslim once it comes to the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We mentioned the statements of Abil Izz al-Tahawi rahimahullah wa Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah tayyab allahu thara regarding the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the creed of a Muslim once it comes to the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, a very important question a very important question. We know right towards the end of the time of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, a huge fitna 
قربت دين دي أمة A fitna that took place and engulfed the overwhelming majority of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is your creed regarding this fitna? But before I answer this question, there is a very important question that we must answer right now. My question is, are the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma'asumeen? That is the word. Are they guarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to commit sins or mistakes? What is the answer? You must say no. No. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the infallibility, al-isma, not being guarded from committing mistakes by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and committing sins by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what we call al-isma. Al-isma was buried with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was buried with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone else after the Prophet, that the companions are subject to making mistakes. But we believe as Muslims that when the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have a consensus regarding a certain issue, then that consensus is a good one and we must follow it. Even in, 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 in the recent times, when a group of jurists in the Ummah, they gather together and they make a decision and a religious ruling regarding a certain issue that we call Ijma'ul Ulama, the consensus of the majority of the jurists of the Ummah, we take by it, we take it, we adopt it. What about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When they had Ijma', when they had consensus, once it comes to the leadership of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, once it came to the leadership of Umar ibn al-Khattab, once it came to the leadership of Uthman ibn Affan, once it came to the leadership of Ali ibn Abi Talib, you cannot come now and say, no, that was not right, that was right or not right. They had a consensus over it. This consensus that was amongst the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a burhan, is an evidence against the ummah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, but as individuals, as individuals, we believe that they are subject to error. They are subject to making the wrong calls. Now, this will help us to answer the question that I asked at the beginning. What is the creed of a Muslim? regarding the quarrelsomes and the fighting that erupted amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the death of Uthman ibn, uh, ibn Affan radiyallahu an. We refrain from talking about it. We refrain. Yes, some of the companions, they made the wrong calls. But you know what? They made so much good deeds. They did so much good deeds that would erase the sin in making a wrong call. And I'll give you an evidence from the Sunnah. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to uh, go and conquer Mecca after they broke the covenant, the truce of Al-Hudaybiyah, there was a companion who participated in the Battle of Badr, sent in secret to the people in Mecca that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is about to invade you, so get ready, be prepared. This is what we call right now treason. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-hadith is Muslim, al-Bukhari wa Muslim. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu an, and they grabbed that book, that letter that he sent from a woman in a, in a certain place. Uh, I don't want to dig into the details of the hadith. I'm just looking for a little piece. Then the letter we, uh, was brought to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the companion whose name was Hatib ibn Abi Balta'ah, someone who participated in the Battle of Badr. And he asked him, Ya Hatib, O oh Hatib, why did you do this? He said, O oh Messenger of Allah, I have a family, I have children back in Mecca, and I don't have anybody to protect them. And I thought if I would send a letter to those who are taking care of my uh, children back in Mecca, they may uh, safeguard them and, 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 and so forth. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu an stood up, Upon seeing the treason from Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a, the companion who participated in the Battle of Badr, and he wanted to kill him. Here is what the Prophet said, No, O Umar, 
أن يكون قد اطلع إلى أهل بدر فقال لهم اعملوا ما شئتم فإني قد غفرت لكم It may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked into the hearts of the people of Badr who participated in the battle of Badr and told them do as you please I have forgiven you You participating in this battle would pay off any shortcomings that you may have and this is what we believe regarding the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they done so much Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that if any of us would spend the mountain of Uhud in gold we would not equal a handful of one of them Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that they are the best of people khayru nas the best of people Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that, that they, they are the best of humanity brothers and sisters in Islam so for sure they have done enough deeds that would expiate any wrong calls or any intentional, intentional sin that they have committed. And that's what we believe in. We do not talk ill about them. We do not speak bad about them. We do not say Muawiyah did this and Ali did that and Uthman did this and he did that. No, we do not get any of this. We, we say that they did ijtihad. They were confronted with that fitna and they had to make a decision. Intentionally, they wanted what is in their intention, they wanted what is good. But they made the wrong call. Some of them made the wrong call. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that if you do ijtihad, if you try to reach the right decision in a time of fitna, when you have no evidence, no text from the Quran and the Sunnah, if you reach the right conclusion, you get two rewards. And if you take the wrong path, you get one reward brothers and sisters in Islam. This is how we should talk about the quarreling and the fighting that erupted amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the death of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. We should not get into it. And if we have to, then we just stay away from any labeling or any name calling to these companions. We always say, Uthman radiallahu an, Ali radiallahu an, Muawiyah radiallahu an, Sa'd radiallahu an, Al-Hasan radiallahu an, Al-Hussein radiallahu an. We do not differentiate between any of, amongst any of them brothers and sisters in Islam. This is a very important, a very important brothers and sisters in Islam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who spent before the conquest of Mecca are not equal to those who spent after the conquest of Mecca. لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل. These companions, the majority of them, participated in Badr, participated in Uhud, participated in Khandaq, participated in the truce of Al-Hudaybiyyah. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يلج النار أحد شهد بدرا والحديبيه. Anyone who participated in the Battle of Badr, they were 300 plus, and Al Hudaybiyah, and they were 1400 plus, they will not go to the hellfire, brothers and sisters in Islam. How dare you label these companions to be amongst the dwellers of the hellfire? And this is what some Muslims do. Be careful once it comes to the, your creed regarding the companions of the Prophet, وسلم, and also once it comes to talking about the fighting and the quarrelsome that took place and erupted amongst the prophets, uh, amongst the companions of the Prophet. A final question, and I'll answer it in one minute before my time is up. Do the companions have any preference? Yes, they do. The four, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, then the rest of the ten who were giving glad tidings of Jannah, are the best of the Ummah. Sa'ad, Talha, Al-Zubayr, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Sa'id ibn Zayd, Abu Ubaid ibn Al-Jarrah. Then those who participated in the Battle of Badr, Hadith al-Bara ibn Azib, Fi Sahih al-Bukhari, they were 300 plus. Then those who participated in the truce of Al-Hudaybiyyah. Then those who believed before the conquest of Mecca are the best of the Ummah uh, and they are better than those who believed afterwards. But in general, we honor, we love, we dignify, we fall in love with all of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Be careful, my brothers and sisters in Islam. This is the objective of this series, Righteous Companions, to reform any distortion that happened in your creed once it comes to the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Guess what? Next episode, we're going to talk about who? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. Do not miss the next episode 
of righteous companions. Till then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.